Wing Reaper peeps. There, is that energetic enough for you? I wanted to make sure I was more energetic since, you know, I was kind of like chill yesterday and didn't have enough caffeine. And today I didn't have any more caffeine, but I feel like, you know, one of those days when you wake up with energy, those fortunate days that happen so few, <laughs> so infrequently. <laughs> so hello. How are you guys doing? Let's see here. Hello, Twisted Oma. You can't find me? But I'm here. You should be able to find me. I hope you can find me. At this point, I'm like right in front of you. It's like when you think your glasses are lost and you look the entire house over and then you realize they're on your nose. Yeah, it's like that. So, do do do. Yes, sorry for the, yes. <laughs> never early, never late shows up precisely when she means to. Margaret, you got it. Exactly. That's me. Yeah, and today's um, late start is partially due to technical issues uh, yeah. as well as uh, a poor Kiri butt. Yeah, my, I have an incontinent older dog. And, and so when I'm late, it's almost always because she's having a moment because I can sit there and try to take her out all morning. But when she gets excited, like when we come to work is when, well, the proverbial poop hits the fan. So, uh, so some days are better than others. So so please forgive my poor cute Kiri dog. She is old and it's just the way it happens. And then our camera is a little wonky today. Our, our dot cam is having a, having a moment. So between, between all of that, we nonetheless are here. Not too late and everything. So you don't remember ever waking up with that much energy, Coos? Change your diet. That's what did it for me. Actually helped a lot. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, hey. poor doggy. Yeah, she's just, she's just old and she had radiation treatment for cancer on her rear end. Um, so unfortunately that just gives her, it, it makes her that way. It's just, you know, you deal with it, right? Because they're old and fed her since she was a puppy. So, yes. And our technical issues actually have to do with our document cam, which we have Boop. said time and time again that we don't super trust because it does have random moments like this where um, the LCD touchscreen, which is the only way to manipulate any of the controls and turn stuff off of auto um, to make stuff at least look semi-professional, it refuses to accept inputs. Yeah, yeah. It's, the camera is definitely <laughs> having a Monday even though it's not a Monday. Correct. It has been power cycled several times. I should try it again refuses. just to see. It no, work? it's still not listening to me. Okay. I think it's frying. Don't you think it's frying? I don't know. It, it's anyway, a, yeah, it's done it one <laughs> we're doing time. a larger model today. So although mm -hmm. we'll do a little hunt and pecking and we may see some white balance weirdness. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it, it'll it'll overall it should carry. Um, and we're doing metallics today. Mm -hmm. True metallics because you guys complained so much last week when I was doing NMM. So we'll just probably today and maybe even tomorrow, um, we'll just do two sessions on TMM. Uh, true metallic metals, uh, and we'll do a silver and then probably a gold thing. Um, <clears throat> feed me Seymour. Actually, Melon, I mean, that's Audrey, right? That's our paint department machine. So, yeah. The camera's logical Monday, right? Right. Late, but here. You are never late, Rings. You, uh, you uh, appear precisely when you mean to. Um, yeah, why would the camera be professional either? Good yeah, point. You're Good right, point. Mrs. What's going to happen when we get the awesome teal camera that I have then? You know, it's going to be all professional looking. We're going to have to <laughs> double say, no, no, seriously, despite our camera, we're not professionals. There all right. Go. Excellent. You ready, Miss Ann? Yeah, you started? you know, as ready as I'm ever going to be. We're going to just, you know, do some stuff and some things, and I'm going to show you guys. Actually, this is going to be kind of like I showed on The Grudge ages ago, but I'm going to... Uh, Say true. It's just using metallic paint, but in an educated manner, Cybestorm. Um, like, not just slathering silver on something, right? And not just putting a wash on it afterwards. So, yes, TMM. Woo, we have subs! Yay! Thank you, Thanks, Melon. Melon. Yeah, because I was just telling people the other day that even though we don't do giveaways on this early show, um, it, subs are still important to show the bosses that people like this content, right? You're kind of voting, hi Planer, um, you're kind of voting uh, with your subs, right? So when you sub during a show you really like, that's a vote for that show to keep going. So you always, even though we don't have giveaways yet, I really appreciate everybody who subs during my show. So awesome. So we've got Mr. Ogre Juggernaut, and I've got his happy little card right here. And you will notice some weird things with white balance. There's my, there's the camera hunting and pecking because it just saw this. So I'm not going to leave this on the on the ground here because essentially a document cam is always going to focus on real tight stuff like text. So if I want it to focus only on ogre, I can only leave this up for a minute. But y'all know who this is. He was a he was a free free optional mini free monthly mini a while ago. Um, and it's four four zero one one, and I think Justin is putting it, put it in the uh, in the text, right in the. It's title. in the title, correct. Awesome, super. And actually, real quick, are you using any sort of metallic triad? 
Um, I'm not. You're not. Okay. No, we're going hardcore today. All you right. Bet. Yeah. Um, because actually, uh, when I paint metallics, I really only choose uh, one metallic to work with, and then I add other paints to it to tune it. All right. Yeah. Well, that works too. Well, actually, yeah, and I always use pearl white as a highlighter for it because pearl white doesn't matter whether I use silver or gold. And we'll talk about pearl white because actually. I did a thing uh, I, where I talked about Pearl White because I just did a metallics thing for my Patreon. And uh, so Pearl White, somebody had said, I don't know how to use Pearl White. What the heck is it for? And I will instruct you. So the first rule, there are metallic triads. Yeah. I mean, all, the first gold triad, um, 9049, 9050, 91. Uh, the silver triad, 9052, 53, 54. Um, the uh, blade steel one uh, in bones, technically uh, blade steel and uh, filigree silver and uh, shining mithril or whatever the, the mithril one is. You can use those as a triad. Um, there are also metallic triads that are just like various metallics and the only thing in common is that they're, they're metallics. But some of them, the silver and gold triads, are very usable. So I'm using carbon gray as a base coat. And rule number one when you are doing silver, and we're going to do silver and steel today, is uh, to never just paint on the metallic. Even over bones black, I want a darker base coat. Um, when you put a dark base coat down, you essentially make the metallic beer shinier. Um, the darker your base coat, the more that will be a factor. I've used everything from uh, cloudy gray 9090, or sorry, 9089, to uh, stormy gray 9088 to carbon gray. Actually, it's the first time I'm using carbon gray, but I have to assume it's going to look great. So, because carbon gray, and it's one of my favorite new colors, and if you don't own it yet, pick it up, because it's cool. It is a lovely charcoal gray, and you can get a super quickie black with it by just putting a black wash over the top. That's kind of why carbon gray came to be. I had a friend who was painting, uh, I think it was Black Templars or something else like that, and they wanted a super fast, they wanted a dark gray that was light enough to still show through a black wash, um, but dark enough to still read as black after you washed black over it. And that is what carbon gray is. It is a charcoal gray that you can do a super fast black quickie technique on. You can also just use it as a dark gray. I happen to like dark grays. I like grays in general. I like neutrals. So it's a very useful color. Do not uh, be uh, fooled by the fact that it is so close to black. It is actually notably different and uh, cool. Miss Ann, can yeah. you uh, actually tell me the skews of the, the paints you have right there? That oh, you're sure. Sorry. Using? So, okay, carbon gray is 9318. Again, the document cam is going to want to eat those, grab those things. And we're going to start, I think, with filigree silver today. Um, I may change my mind, but I think filigree silver is what I'm going to do. And then when we go in for a little bit of punchy highlight, we're going to use pearl white. So this is bones metallic, and this is standard metallic core metallic, I guess I should call it. Do, do, do. Yeah, Justin's all disappointed because he can't use his new triad tool. You're right, Tazalange. I, I don't have the tool done yet, but I will pretty soon. Uh, I mentioned last week, rings, I just saw your question. Um, just Actually, I use the same thing that Justin uses here at Reaper, which is uh, Streamlabs OBS, or OBS Streamlabs. Um, so it is uh, a Streamlabs version of OBS, the standard popular streaming software. I find it was very easy to learn to use. Um, even now, I'm, I'm starting to get more familiar with its uh, menus as regards streaming, and I'm getting a bit better at it. Um, but it's fairly common sense once you, once you start to, to stream or video and you start to learn what things are. Um, I think it was very simple to pick up. I mean, especially for somebody like me who doesn't have a lot of time. There, you can see kind of how it's a dark gray, right, instead of a black for that breastplate. Yeah, so the difference, by the way, um, between the Bones Metallics and the, and the st Standard Metallics is that the Bones Metallics, at least most of them, use a new, uh, new flake technology. So it's uh, silica-based instead of mica-based, and it is shinier. Now, this can cause it to look a little glitterier as well, so your mileage may vary. It depends on what you like, uh, so try both. But for people asked us forever to get a shinier metallic, people who are generally like photoing their stuff, like if they're using metallics on a model for an ad or for, fo for you know, to put up on, on their social media, a lot of people like the, more, the standard Reaper metallics for that because they're not quite as shiny, so they tend to photo a little better. Remember, that's why people like NMM too, right? It's not shiny, and you can control it a little bit better. So... Keep that in mind. I could have, if I was um, choosing something else from standard line, I might use uh, polished silver 
or the um, the silver that's next to the honed metal or honed steel. Tarnished silver, maybe. One of those. I would use one of those uh, for my first metallic coat. But here we're going to use bones. I'm going to try to make it work. Uh, I think I'm just going to get his little hip parts real quick. Let's do all this in silver. I may change my mind, though. Those hip parts could be gold and they could be an accent because I'm going for a little bit of a mix on this guy. Um, you can use your carbon gray pretty thick. Obviously, when you thin it, you can run into problems with it covering over the bones. I wash all my models. That tends to help with that, but not always. All right. So let's just do the breastplate. Let's just do that. Uh, do I want to do the gorget? No, we're just going to leave it. All right. So first thing we do is put on a bright, read me, read my lips, bright uh, silver. Brightest silver you can get. Um, some, uh, some metallics are going to work better for this technique than others. I've heard some of my friends say that like the Vallejo model air, like the chrome and stuff, uh, because of the base used, this doesn't work as well with it. Um, I've had good success with old Games Workshop metallics. I kind of assume that newer Games Workshop metallics will also work fine. Um, and with the Reaper stuff. So, what you will generally, and I'm not thinning my metallics, by the way. Um, just so y'all know, and somebody asked about this on the stream the other day. Um, uh, okay, one second, Disarma, I'll get to you in just a second. Um, but if you put too much water in a metallic, it's going to fall right out of solution. And that's because the flake is essentially rocks. It's going to, it's heavier. It's heavier than water. So that's why your metallics may act very weird on a wet palette, which is why you really shouldn't use a wet palette with your metallics. Um, at least in most cases, I found it's very detrimental. Um, and uh, you also should not thin them very much. Like eight drops of paint and one drop of water or medium is fine. Uh, actually, if you're using mediums, like I'll use the gloss sealer in a while, that's not nearly so bad, but... Uh, but yes, okay, so do 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 um, Pathfinder metallics are made with um, Bones metallic technology. I think there may be a couple of differences to Surma because I had to choose, they were very, uh, very specific on their colors. So I had to choose the flake that would get me closest to their color rather than choosing a flake for uh, a particular quality it might have. Um, so I used the new technology wherever possible, unless for the color I had to hit something specific that only a core metallic would let me do. Because we do have more colors in the core metallic than in the bones metallic for the flakes. Metallic color is mostly determined by flake and then of course you're adding pigment to it, but when you hit the light with it, it's the flake you're going to see. So this is just one coat. It's very shiny. It is patchy. I'll put another coat on it. Um, if I want it smoother, like I said, I can add just a little bit of water, but I don't want to add very much. This is still a much smoother, brighter coat than you're going to get if you did not put down a layer of gray first. So I'm going to thin it, and then I'm going to put try the thinned one over this other side, which should make it self-level a little bit better and be a little less streaky. Either way, it doesn't matter. Just put on a thin layer and try to make it as smooth as you can and then go back and put another layer on it when you are when your first layer has dried. And I don't really care. I could keep a black line between the different plates, but at this point I just want a base coat, so I can always re-add a black line. And yes, you can airbrush these. Um, metallics tend to kind of muck up airbrushes because of the size of the flake. You really can't get below a certain level with uh, metallic flakes. So you just can't. There comes a point where you just cannot grind it fine enough. So. You can see, actually, that thinning it to try to get a smoother layer really hasn't worked, right? It's gotten a little bit globbier in places, it's a little bit patchy, and more to the point, when I look at it, it's actually not as shiny when I thin it, because I'm, I'm picking up less metal particles. So this is yet another reason why you shouldn't really thin your metallics. So I'm going to actually mix, or unmix, rather, get a straight up metallic again and put a second coat on this right side. See, I'm doing all this so you guys can learn. How to do, how to deal with these things, these problematic things. Your medium's non-zero value. Um, okay, yeah, airbrush medium is a quick dry. Yeah, it will, it's meant to do that. Actually, it's meant to cause quicker drying time. Um, because when you're airbrushing, you want it fluid when it comes out, but you would like it to be dry right away. Um, so there's a reason for that. But yes, any medium if used to thin a metallic, will not cause the flake to fall out of solution because the medium by, by its nature is thicker than water. Justin is annoyed at my camera. I can tell because he's creeping over here. 
Ah, okay. Ah, 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 ah. All right, so second, second coat. Now we're starting to get some shinies. Getting some shinies. Um, you may, you may experience a temptation to try to just leave the paint thicker in order to cover faster. Just don't. Um, if you do that, inevitably you're going to get kind of puddles uh, where the paint is really thick and globby and you're going to get smooth spaces. And then when you try to go over the top, you're going to find that those globby spaces just build up more. So whatever you're doing with metallic, just try to put a nice even layer on. Um, also just the various globs and stuff sometimes make it hard to judge when a surface is dry. So you may need to touch it and make sure that it's dry before you put your next layer on. So did you see Josh's question? No, what is it? He, he asked, uh, why not work down with washes? I will. You will work down with yeah, washes? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. This is just the base. I just want a really bright base precisely for the reason. Um, however, I'm not actually going to do washes, uh, Josh. I'm going to paint. I'm going to use layers of paint, but I'm going to mix them with a medium, and I'm going to uh, apply them specifically. I'm not going to put them over the whole surface. Uh, a wash is very fast, but everybody knows how to do a wash over metallics. That's like the first technique you're practically taught when you start painting metallics. And it doesn't let you keep uh, control over lights and shadows. I mean, you're always, after a wash, you're going to have to go in and re-highlight. So I just find that I like to take out that intermediate step. Oh, and I touched that before it was fully dry, so now I'm having a glob issue. So I'm going to try to brush, buff it out with my brush. Sometimes you can do that. All right, so we've got a nice solid coming up. Also, you managed to chase the corner cam. Oh, no. <laughs> I always chase the corner cam. It's like a border collie thing. The corner cam is my sheep. I'm just trying to herd it into the corner and keep it there, Justin. Also, Josh said pigment washes do, though. What? I think it's in reference to what you were just talking about. I forget the words that come out of my mouth right after they do. Um, pigment washes do... When I talk about a wash, I'm only talking about pigment washes, by the way, just so you know. I don't use inks on metallics anymore. I used to um, back in the day, but these days I'm very much into uh, pigment. So, all right. I'm going to let that dry for a sec. Okay. Uh, pigment washes do... Okay, so... Mini Painting Studio. Give me a... Yeah, give me more than a partial sentence. Do what? Because I may have misspoken, or I may want to clarify. Yes, I knew you'd see that painting dog. It was Border Collie humor for the win, for sure. Pigment washes do... I'll wait for you to type. And I'll mix up my first uh, bit of stuff. Let's see, what do I want? Walnut? Yeah. And I'm going to put maybe two drops of this. And this isn't a technique I use very much. I'll be straight up with you guys. Is I, uh, I do tend to NMM these days, mostly because that's what people want. Uh, I wanted two drops of that. Some of this will be mucky, but it'll be fun. And we'll put some gloss sealer in there to thin it down without water. We'll put double that. And then we'll drop a little bit of our metallics. Okay, pigment washes get you tonal control. Pigment washes. Maybe I'm not understanding what you mean with pigment washes. Is that the wash that has um, swine in it? I'm, I'm so unbelievable. Pigment versus an ink. Josie, pigments are particles. Inks are dyes. Dyes are fully soluble in water. So when you're dealing with inks over miniatures, at least in the old days, it was artist inks, and it would reactivate when you tried to put paint or highlights. Um, oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Um, at least I think I do. Uh, anyway, so it would bleed through, essentially, inks or dyes. Nowadays, things like the Dale Rowney inks are actually pigment washes. They're actually made with pigments. They're not made with dyes anymore. So the fact that they call them inks is very confusing. Um, but uh, pigment is, of course, what goes into paint. Essentially, textile industry decided that it could make something that was both. Uh, and so then that was stolen by the art community. Uh, Dale Rowney is one example. Uh, okay, so... 
Yeah, washes can give you control. I just don't like, when I think of a wash mini painting studio, I think of just throwing it all over the whole surface. And that's probably just my terminology problem. Um, so it's probably, we're probably agreeing. We're just not using the same terms. I do run into that a lot with painting. Um, but I tend not to throw the wash in an even layer over everything and let it pool and dry. Um, instead, I tend to glob it for this technique. So let's see if I've got it about right. And do I want this brush? Hmm. All right, because this is essentially, I want this dirty. The only reason that I usually ever use, that I will ever use True Metallics is if I want to make them dirty, if I want to dirty them up. Um, I typically, if I'm doing for, going for clean, I much prefer NMM. Uh, da, 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 da. So this isn't as easy to do it on as a big breastplate, but essentially I'm going to try, oh, did I do my, my silver in there? I don't think I did. So what my mix is here is four drops of gloss sealer, two drops of walnut brown, and I'm adding one drop of the silver that we started with, filigree. And this is a technique that I learned from Kirill. AP washes. Right, I mean, okay, yeah. I don't know what the AP washes are. I don't use them, so again, terminology that I'm not familiar with. Everybody's got their own shtick, their own way to do stuff. But when it comes down to it, if I need a wash, I build it myself out of uh, Reaper paint and mediums. I don't really find it useful uh, for me, since I know the paint line so well. I like to work with what I've got um, rather than necessarily experimenting with a lot of outside stuff. I try to keep my hand in when I see um, like new products released, new paint lines released. I try to actually try them out. But you probably know a whole bunch of different materials that I don't um, simply because when I made Master Series, I kind of made, okay, this is my paint line. And uh, yeah, I don't go outside of it very much except to sample other people's stuff like the, uh, I'm trying out the scale 75 tube paints actually, the artist line. All right, so first layer to get it dirtied up. And I'm probably going to put a glaze of this over the top of the whole area. And I'm just like making it kind of, I want to make it heavier toward where um, it's going to pool. Like it, like dirt and debris are going to run down off his armor and blood and uh, kind of pool toward the bottom. If they're going to get stuck, they're going to get stuck down here. Um, I'm going to do some splatters and leave some like random blobs because I mean, there's going to be pockets in his armor that catch stuff. Um, and I do want the whole surface to be covered so I can go back in and brighten specific areas. So I'll do that with glazing probably after I've added some blobs. <sighs> yeah, um, water essentially will make metallics and paints fall out of solution faster. Uh, using sealer allows you to thin without having that problem, Margaret. So, and with metallics, because you don't want that flake to fall out of solution, it's, uh, it's useful. So I've actually added a bit of water to my glaze or to my, um, my initial mix. And I'm just going to dull down the top a bit, glazing it over, not letting it pool. I want to be particular about where I let things pool and, uh, what, uh, Yeah, I am not the expert at colored metallics, guys. Michael Proctor is the expert on colored metallics. He is the man. And when we get his butt on uh, the show or on the afternoon show at some point, he can wow you with what he does because the man is a genius. Um, let me see. I want a, more of a brownish color now. I tend to layer on different colors because there's going to be different types of gore and muck that hit this guy over time. Let's see. So I'm going to use a ruddy leather right now, which gives me more of a reddish brown color. And I like to layer up different, uh, different levels of color on it to make it look more realistic. So this is just the start. Let's see here. Boom, boom. And again, I'm using four drops of gloss sealer, two drops of paint 9109 ruddy leather. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the filigree silver in there. Uh, Kirill taught me to do the, the silver. He just thinks that essentially it integrates it a bit better and it suggests the shine of the silver underneath uh, was the way he explained it. I like the effect, so I copy his, uh, his technique, although my formula is slightly different. 
There we go. And this one we have to thin a little bit more. Well, maybe we'll just go for it. Oh, and the other thing to mention is that you don't have to use gloss sealer if you don't want it. This is our gloss sealer. You can also use brush on sealer. Depends on what kind of finish you want. If you want a duller finish, ah, um, then you want to use the brush on sealer, um, which of course is more matte. And if you want a shinier one, use the gloss. I've just used the gloss. Uh, it's preference. There is no preferred method, Ramre. Um, the thing is with NMM and good metallics, you really want to understand how light falls on the model to get a good realistic effect. Um, NMM is more probably more important on that front to know to, to be able to imagine how light actually acts. Um, and metallics gives you some help by being shiny itself. Uh, but NMM also photos better, so when you see people doing uh, models for ads and stuff, they will often use NMM. Like when I paint for Dark Sword miniatures, uh, which I still do here every once in a while, um, I uh, will use NMM because Jim doesn't want anything else. Um, essentially, when he tries to photo a model that doesn't use NMM, it doesn't look good. Um, I also find that, uh, I do find that true metallics look better on larger models. Um, NMM looking better on smaller models and uh, smaller details because with NMM you can get very crisp and pick out like little filigree and stuff like that a little bit easier. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can do anything with either technique, but uh, some things are easier with one technique or another. So let's get some reddish brown in there, modeling. There's a big divot up there I want to hit. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, because photos flatten stuff out. Um, NMM generally looks better in photos because it's a flat technique already. Let's see here. Oh, the Tiffling bust. Yeah, I have one of those downstairs, no Menzik. Uh, oh. Huh? Twisted Oma, that's uh that's not me. The uh our camera uh UI essentially stopped working. It refused. Yeah, like we are under technical difficulties warning today. Yeah. And I could have switched it out with one of our backup cams, but that would have added probably 10 minutes of the delay we were already having. Yeah, I felt that we so. could work with it because this is a big model and because I'm not trying to, I'm trying not to move too much. Um, let's see here. Let's add some more stuff to this. And maybe I'll add, maybe I should add a bit of a brown. Do I have my russet brown? I do. We're going to russet brown it. Russet brown is burnt umber, our equivalent for artist's burnt umber. It's a good... Um, brown for adding just dingy look to stuff. So I'm going to actually build just a quick wash of that with some gloss sealer. Actually, sorry, not a wash, a glaze. I need to use my terms correctly. At least, at least consistently. That would help. So a couple drops. This time I will add some water though. Like four drops of sealer, a drop of paint, and uh, one brush, big brush full of water. Let's see. I want it really thin. I just want to bring a certain warm dinginess to this because it's going a bit red with the um, ruddy leather. So this, that should be good. All right, so pretty much I'm going to dirty up the surface and then use metallics to add re-add some shine at key points. So I'm brushing a glaze of russet brown over the whole dang thing because I want it to look more dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. And the nice thing about glazes is that I'm not losing the metallic entirely. I still have some of it, especially because I'm using the gloss. You can see how shiny that's going to be. Um, hello, sentimental. Yeah, it's not your eyes, Wisdoma. We have technical difficulties. No, just me babbling on. You did not miss much. All right, so I think we've got... That's a nice... See how that added a nice dirty tinge to it? Like, I really love russet brown for this. Um, it really, really dirty stuff up. So he's, he's looking extremely dirty now. He looks like he's got lots of stuff thrown at his armor and it's just kind of sat there because obviously this is not a monster. Whoa. Oh, well, thank you, Motor City Ray. Yeah, Dang. thank you, Motor City Ray. Motor Form City Ray says, formerly, ah, here uh, is a, oh yeah. Formerly, formerly known as Vanquisher. Yes, that's right. I didn't know him as Vanquisher. I only know him as Motor City Ray. And he's, he's pretty cool. One dude. of the coolest people we know. Yes, exactly. Doo, doo, doo. All right, I'm just going to take some of the carbon gray, by the way, and just kind of, uh, when I see nicks in the armor that haven't really filled in, I'm going to just add that to make sure those nicks show up. And if I'm 
darken it. It looks like I need to darken a couple areas up here that didn't really get darkened in. I'll leave that one there. So nice, dingy, dirty. And you can like pretty much build this up as much as you want. If you want a really deep, dark, uh, like almost like burned or, or, or scorched metal look, you can keep building up layers of brown and near black down here. Um, walnut in my case. So like if I go back in now with my walnut and I really want to darken down this lower part, make it almost solid where you almost can't see the metal through it, I can do that. I'm just using a stippling uh, effect, really. Don't want to show any lines, so using a bigger brush that doesn't have a great tip, like my mixing brush here, is actually pretty good. Oh, belated happy birthday to Motor City Ray. You had a birthday. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. That's great. My birthday is not until it is much warmer out. Let's see. Just want to make it and the reason that I like to take this really dark for metals although you can still see the metallic showing through see isn't that kind of cool um, if you wanted to start with the darker actually that's it Coobs that's why you don't want to start with a darker metallic it wouldn't work um, if you had started this with black and steel you wouldn't see any of this none of it it's uh, if you want it to go dark just keep bringing it down with uh, with colors um, if you're starting with a dark metallic then glazing and washing and adding like stuff like this, uh, you're going to lose so much of it. Um, uh, really, shadowed steel and blackened steel are meant to be shades for metallics. So really, you're still supposed to have you know a lighter area, and then it's supposed to give you kind of a quickie metallic, a, the equivalent of adding black to a regular steel metallic, um, or black and umber in some cases. Uh, but yeah, this it does not work very well when you're starting with, or it doesn't work at all when you're starting with darker metallics. If you want a black metallic, then do that. And if you're going to suggest dirt, I would, I would honestly not do this mixing with gloss sealer thing. I would just add directly some rust colors or something. Um, I might add a little bit of gloss sealer, but yeah. Yeah, you can use the black metallics. Adamantium black from Core line, 9124, is very close to adamantine from the Pathfinder line. Um, they just have a slight, there's a slight difference in color. Um, darker, yeah, darker metallics are, okay, well, think about the triads, right? Why did I make the triads? We asked this question yesterday and answered it. Uh, the triads are training wheels. The triads are there to make it easy for you if you're not comfortable with trying, you know, uh, to mix or to do stuff like this where you're adding colors over the top of other colors. So when you're starting out, it's very much easier for us to just say here, you know, start with black and steel, then uh, highlight with honed steel and finish it off just on the highlights with, with tarnished silver, right? That's going to give you a pretty good effect. Um, and it's pretty, pretty standard. It's only when you start doing stuff like this where, oop, and I dropped my brush. Oh no, blooper reel. Uh oh. That's uh, the first time that's it? happened on camera. I do this all the time. I throw my brushes on the floor all the oh, time. Oh boy. Um, but uh, this model is actually just a Reaper Bones model. You could use it probably for something uh, in Warhammer, but I'm, I don't know the current Warhammer armies because it's Age of Sigmar. I don't know them well enough to know if there'd be something uh, that it goes with. Uh, brown and purple. Yeah, Karinico, uh, purple and brown work really good next to each other. Even if you throw a little bit of dark green, it can be interesting. Um, but yeah, so what we're, I guess what we're doing here is, is a little bit more of an advanced technique. So, so it is good to highlight that and say, you know, this is just, this is the way that Anne likes to do true metallics. Because once I tried it, I loved how it looked. All right, do, do, do. I'm just going to bring some of my red up here. I noticed that I didn't have a whole lot of it. Uh, and we're appropriately dingy, and I think now I can start bringing in some silver over the top of this tarnish. Yeah, the triads are, are really useful, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, and even, even now, like, I normally don't <laughs> drop to brush, brush it off. Cute thunderflux. Um, but, uh, do, 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 do. right, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so essentially what I think is the, probably the most utilitarian metallics are the highlights and the midtones. Um, you, I could have started this with honed steel as well. Let me see, where is my, where are my metallics and where is my pearl white? All right, so 
Now that I've got this all dingified, and the shine is from the underlying metallic and the gloss sealer. You can still see there's a little bit of shine. See, see just the little bit of shine in the shadow areas here, guys? But notice how much brighter it is where I've left the silver near the surface, right? So you're still getting, you're getting exactly the effect that you want then. You're getting the effect of this is all metal, but that it's much dingier and dirtier down near the bottom. So that's what you want. Because the thing about the, the metallics triads is they're, they work really well when you're first starting out to get you to figure if, to think about shading and highlighting metallics. But if you think about it, shadows on metallics wouldn't be as shiny. <laughs> like, especially not if, you're got, if you've got a dirty or weathered metallic like this guy. So you would want a duller finish on that, which is why actually people started doing shaded metallics and using regular paint to shade them is so that they could get that duller effect in the shadows. And then the highlights really punch out when you add pure metallic to them. So let's go back to our silver which again is filigree silver we're working with, 90, 9453, which is a little bit shinier and sparklier than um, the straight up silver from uh, Core, both of the silvers from Core. Um, and yeah, I could have started with a steel and said, steels are just a little darker, I wanted to start really bright. The brighter you start when you start doing this, the, uh, the more drama you get, essentially, the more dramatic the effect. Um, sentimental minis just mess around, and the big thing is I would recommend this guy or any of our giants Pick up something with a big breastplate or big chunky shoulder pads like this because it's much easier to like get familiar with the shaded metallics and true metallics if you've got a big area to work on. Because then you can really start, you know, using a few different colors. You can leave some texture in there. You know, it, it works really well. So now I'm going to go back actually and I'm going to grab some of my metallic and I'm actually going to, I'll show you guys on this. I'm, I'm going to actually tap it off a little bit. I don't want a lot. I just want to tap some of my excess paint off. Not dry brushing, but I want to kind of get a buffed effect, real soft effect when I start adding back in these textures, or these metallics, sorry. You're chasing so, the, uh, the cam again. Chasing, I'm chasing, border collie moment. Border collie moment. I need a border collie icon. Whoever has a border collie icon. Talk to Painting Dog. She probably has all sorts of awesome border collie pictures. Also, I need some more white in the picture because it's, it's really trying to warm your hands up. Boop. More white. Yeah, like uh, maybe put the palette in there a little bit. There we go. That work for you? Yeah, it's, it's cooler now. Justin is so silly. <laughs> you're such a perfectionist. Well, I mean, your hands look like they had sunburn for a second. Well, you know. Like severe sunburn. Uh, let me see. Painting dog, that'll do. Send me a good, a good border collie face um, photo painting dog on the Patreon or something, and maybe I can get um, Trashorama to make me a border collie icon that we can use when I'm chasing my portrait. That would be awesome. So even though I'm a shepherd person, I was a collie person first. So I could, at this point, I think I kind of want to switch to a smaller brush. So let me find a smaller, equally abused brush, or at least a smaller somewhat abused brush. Let's see here. Who do I want to abuse? Because even though I'm doing imprecise uh, brush strokes at this point, I can use a more precise brush for those. There's an old Reaper Ot 5 that I abused long ago. We'll use it. So let me grab some on my brush and I'm going to dab it off in little bits. There, that's the smaller brush will give me more control. And start dabbing it mostly onto this. Remember, okay, so now we have to think about how light falls. When, when I tilt this, and this is where metallics give you a help, right? Because when I tilt this so the light is falling on the breastplate, you can clearly see it falls in a rounded area. And if I was painting where I wanted my light source to come from here, you can see it should fall right here, right, and around this area. So if we want a light source that comes from here, this is where we would put our true metallics back in, all where you see this nice rounded area here. Um, and if we wanted it more from the top, ah, you can see, you know, and you could just kind of mess with it, turn the model a little bit. If we wanted it from this side, then we're looking at like that. And it kind of gives you a clue as to where to put your brightest highlights. So that's the nice thing about working with shaded metallics. So sometimes for metallics on a model like this, where there's a clear cut down the breastplate, making it brighter on one side really is a nice dramatic effect. Because then you see you actually want to brighten up this little area, right? Because you can see the glass. And this is why the gloss sealer is useful. Is like when I do the directional light, I can see I need a highlight right down there if I'm doing directional like that. And I also probably want to lighten this area just a little bit uh, and leave this area darker if I'm doing a light source coming from that angle. 
Now, if you are doing an angled light source, remember, then you have to like duplicate that on everything else. So, you know, grab it your, at your own risk. Oh, so that's what's doing it. Your, uh, apparently Brush. your second hand is, is causing the, uh, the autofocus the, wobble. No, no, no. The insane, uh, warming of the camera. It thinks that your skin is real white and not, um, your palette. Mm. Do we need more palette? Uh, yeah, it's fine as long as you don't have your entire second hand in there. Boop. Like so? Yeah. Like that's fine. All right. Good deal. All right. Yeah. This is a really good model for this. Um, yeah, you could do that. You could also shade with black and steel or adamantium. Um, I mean, when it comes down to it, with black and steel and adamantium, you're getting kind of what I'm making here anyway. Just a, there's a little bit, there's more metallic in those, right? So they're going to be shiny. Um, and they also are going to be really neutral, non-zero value. The problem with using black and steel or adamantium is that they're mostly shaded with just black. So if you're really looking for a soiled, mucky look like this, you've got to introduce some brown. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to use dark metallics to do this technique, I recommend also using Scorched Metal 9125, which is a very brown metallic. It actually is made for like, you know, scorched pipes and things like that. Uh, and it's great for that. It is the exact color of, um, if you ever go to an armorer's shop and they're, they're treating armor essentially to protect it from rust, what they do is they put a layer of linseed oil down and then just brutalize it with heat. It turns that color. It turns that scorched metal color. Um, so use that if you're going to, if you're going to do this with metallics and you don't want to do it just with, you know, glazes with a little bit of flake added. Do be aware that it will be shinier. Your shadows will be shinier because there is still a significant amount of flake in things like uh, scorched metal and adamantium black and adamantine and all that. There is uh, there's just as much flake as there is in any other metallic. It's just the addition of more pigment that causes it to not shine as much because pigment is opaque and so it somewhat blocks the shininess of it. It's why you can't really have a really shiny metallic metallic black or why it's really hard to do that is because the pigment will naturally dull down a metallic and that's why some of the brightest metallics are almost metal mediums they have very little pigment in them they just have just enough to shift the color or keep it from being you know just totally bright or to give it a little bit of coverage so there you go tons about metallics today guys um, we, uh, Zeistus, we honestly can't do anything right now because the interface, this camera is old and the only way to affect its interface is on its little LED pad, or yeah, LED pad, LCD pad. Um, and the LCD pad is frozen right now. So we will be attacking this problem by probably replacing it with a better camera. Uh, but for this streams today, we'll just have to kind of deal with it. Uh, this may mean, um, it could be tricky for my stream this afternoon because I'm painting a white dragon. But we'll see. So anyway, here I am. I'm just going to dab in more highlight. And I'm going to bring up some of my darker areas. I do want it still to be a little bit irregular because I don't want to lose the, uh, the kind of mottled effect. But now it'll start looking shinier on the top. Really shiny. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of ways to do this. This is just one way to do this. This is the way that I really enjoy doing metallics, which is why I do it this way. Um, and so if you use some other formula and it makes you really happy with the effect, use it. There is never a right or wrong way. Um, and like um, Mini Painting Studio was saying, there are other products out there um, that you may also like to experiment with. Go ahead and do it. Uh, all that matters is at the end of the day, you get an effect for your model that you love. That's the only important thing right there. Hey, Miranda, how you doing? Everyone uh, say hi to Miranda. Hi, Miranda. Since this is her her first time here. Oh, awesome. Nice to meet like. you. Don't use uh, the camera work as, a, as an example. Yeah, our it's camera's having like technical, like, temperamental issues today. It won't, it won't be like this tomorrow. Yes. It won't be like this tomorrow, even if Justin has to come steal my camera. Or well, like next day order a better camera. I have I have backups of that one. This one has just done this twice okay, now. Okay, so I'm looking at this so. and I'm trying to see there. If I tilt it away from the light, you can see that it's noticeably brighter in the areas that I've been stippling the metallic. So, and I made a point of putting a metallic, a pure metallic highlight on the downward facing side. See how the light catches that edge? That's because I put a pure metallic streak right there. Do do do. All right, work up for high heat blued steel. Send us a picture, Ryan. If you show me what the effect is, I can figure out how to do it. I mean, we do have a blue steel color. It's gunmetal. It's a 9126. 
Um, it is very blue. It's kind of based on the, the Vallejo gunmetal because I, uh, I like the color. Actually, that is one of the things that I thought I would show you guys with metallics too is working with that to get a really cool kind of dark blue-black armor. There's some cool things you can do. Uh, other side here, get our little stippling in, make it shinier. Shiny, shiny, much shiny. Ah. Uh, if I wanted rust on the metal Twisted Oma, I would actually not glaze with anything. I would actually take like a rust, rust colored paint and kind of dab it or stipple it into this crack right here. Um, and maybe into like, maybe into these cracks, but the problem is these cracks are so narrow uh, that you'd wipe out the crack. And I probably would put some of it down here in little speckles and pools and puddles. Um, rust is really focused and usually starts in specific areas. If you wanted to do an entire breastplate in rust, then I'd just honestly paint it as rust and put some metal like toward the top or places where it would rub off. Um, but yeah, rust would be orangier. I think I did. I did some rust on the NMM one, didn't I? The orc. I think I did. I suggested a little rust toward the end. But whenever you're trying to do a weathering effect, study actual examples of things that, that look like that um, so that you actually know what you're trying to duplicate. Don't just go from your memory of stuff. Look at photographs because your memory is always faulty and there's almost certainly going to be something some thing that that says this is real that your brain doesn't remember unless you work with it all the time like if you're a blacksmith you know what various types of metal look like in various heated states for example but even then it may may help to uh, have a bit of a reminder all right i'm going to actually grab some pearl white and use that as well all right Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Grabbing pearl white, 9100. Pearl white's intended use is to highlight other metallics. You can mix it into other metallics if you like to get some interesting effects. Uh, for example, do I have the gunmetal color? Yeah, I do. I have gunmetal, let me show you. Take a break from Mr. Ogre for a second. So gunmetal blue is a really dark blue, blue-black metallic. Um, and you, can even, you can't even see the blue in it at this point on the palette. Uh, but there is a little bit of blue in it. So if I want to highlight that, I can just put some pearl white in. And now it is a lighter bluish gray metallic. And I can continue doing that because pearl white is a white flake with white pigment in it. Not too much white pigment so that it doesn't impinge on the shininess. But you can essentially keep highlighting. See that blue now? So you've got a medium blue gray metallic, which you don't otherwise make. Um, so if I were doing, like, armor, I love to use this trick on armor for vampires because uh, vampires are usually, you know, wearing red and it, this looks fantastic next to that. Um, but yeah, you can just keep adding pearl white to other metallics and it doesn't just work on um, silver metallics, it can work on even gold metallics. Oh, thank you. Yay, dog photos. Thank you very much, painting dog. So we, we need the border collie uh, icon. So let's say we're using new gold, which is the brightest gold that we make in Master Series 9151 or 9051. We take our pearl white. And because pearl white doesn't have any black in it, it doesn't go greenish. This is the key. So now we have an even lighter gold that we can use to highlight our new gold, which we thought was the, you know, you can see that that's noticeably lighter. Um, and you can keep on doing that until you get up to pure pearl white. Pearl white is really your magic highlighter, yeah. I think white metallics, I, I, when I first did the line, I mean, it is one of the earlier colors. Uh, it was because I'm like, I need a really, really, really pale highlight. You can also use this uh, if you add the clear brights to them to make um, shiny off-color metallics. For example, if we use like five drops of that and a drop of clear red, do, 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 do. to make a pink metallic it is very easy and now we have a pink metallic Ta-da! it's a little bit more dull um, because the we added a, a paint to it that of course is not shiny but if we can always add a little bit more pearl to it to make it a little lighter pink and to bring up shiny highlights the more the more pearl uh, we add the shinier it will get now I have a pink metallic. Ta-da! Pink metallic. 
We will not paint the ogre with pink metallic. I mean, I could, you know, but a <laughs> way to sell them. Thanks, Jay. I really feel like these are useful. Um, so yeah, it, pearl white is really useful for, for silks, satins, pastel uh, metallics, and also for highlighting pretty much every metallic on that we make. So, and of course I forgot to mix it into my steel. So I want to do a slightly brighter filigree silver. So I'm going to add some pearl to it. Oh, I dropped some water in it. I'm going to re regret that, but that's okay. I can add more paint. It's, it's habit, right? To add the, uh, the water after I put paint in the palette. So now we'll add a little bit more silver to minimize the water, essentially to thicken it up. Let me grab my mixing brush. Don't want to mix with that. There we go. Now we have a slightly lighter silver. You can see that there is a difference between that and that. And we essentially will put that uh, wherever we want to kind of emphasize our highlights. So we're working on the right side of the chest here. It also lets us kind of do things like, like here I've got this big kind of blank space. So I can take this lighter color now, dab some of it off my brush, and, and just concentrate on areas in like the middle of that area. Maybe I'll get some details going on here. Let's see, because I do have um, some areas that are obvious that could be lighter. Kind of stipple it in. As it dries, it'll blend in a little bit more. I'm using the paint full strength instead of dabbing it off here. I'll stipple it across the top of this plate to make that edge show up. See how that looks, shows up? Now, if you think that you got a little too strong, you can take your blades, your uh, filigree silver, your original silver, and put a little bit more to blend it in if you feel like it's too harsh. And if you really feel like it's too harsh, you can always use one of your earlier, earlier glazes to knock it down a little bit. Like you could take your walnut and... Uh, Say, no, no, I got too strong with that. Make sure it's dry, of course, so you don't smear it. And just kind of knock it back with one coat of walnut. And there you go. One coat of walnut blended it in pretty well. And now I've got like little shiny patches on the breastplate. Uh, you can do scrapes this way as well, although getting them fine can be hard. Um, so sometimes I might add a tiny bit of pure white. You need to be careful because you don't want to lose the shiny. Uh, not that one. This one. You want something that does cover, and a lot of metallics don't have great coverage. Um, the Vallejo Model Air is good for this. If you do have it, it's not good for starting this. The chrome isn't, but the chrome is very good for microabrasions and details. Um, so let me just get that. Must protect the shiny, yes. So if I want to do, I'm mixing uh, pure white into my silver, and I'm leaving it pretty thick because I want it to come off the brush and do like a little tiny cut or slash, maybe even some little tiny abrasions. I want to emphasize the part here. Maybe I want to do another another slash of, of a kind of like a sword cut, like the metal got um, scarred. I need to make this a little longer then. Ah, uh, a warm summer day. <laughs> oh, hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Move your hand out a little bit. Do you? Wait for it, wait for it, and we're cooling off. We moved into the shade. Okay. Do I need to, like, continually palletize? Um, it's possible the camera could actually just be imploding. <laughs> um, that one is 100% going in the trash actually going to darken after this. this. Down. So you can also take some paint in and narrow, <laughs> narrow your cut. Um, I put some pure uh, carbon gray right under my little slash in the uh, armor here to make it look a little bit thinner because I found that I went too strong with it. And you can do that. You can always come back and touch it up with some silver afterward. But I want this to be a real narrow, narrow slash. It's harder to do on smaller models. I did a lot of this on uh, Soldier 76, the big statue I did for ReaperCon, the huge man. Uh, he's a foot tall, so doing this sort of detail for him was easy. Uh, actually, you know what? It's possible that all, all of out. the colors in your palette could be making it awful, too. So maybe maybe move the palette out less. All righty. We need to depalletize. Doop. Yeah, that helped a lot. There it is. It cooled down. So it's it's all the colors that are in it. it too doesn't, many colors. It, it doesn't know what to do with those colors. 
if we want to make a dent in this. No, the the, the have... blue paper wouldn't affect it that much. It's oh, it's walnut. it's Straight the paper. I think the pigments from all the uh, palette was was doing it. All the different colors. I'm trying to show you guys. The camera is not happy. So if you want to make a dent. You kind of use the same kind of technique that you did to make that slash, except you want to put uh, a dark shadow above it because uh, the light is falling down. So you would take like walnut brown or pure black and put a dark shadow right up next to it. There we go. Can I get that? Yeah. You want it to look like that. And so that essentially makes you look like a, a dent, like somebody like pretty much swung a sword overhand overhead at uh, the monster and uh, the monster was like no way so hard to see again you guys can see how hard it is to pick up the metallics here um, on the camera right so we're talking about that why people use an amendment well now you can see the dent there you go um, Justin is going to try to throw rainbows into my uh, my uh, setup here we did almost just the end yeah the professional way um, slash hashtag not professional we're not getting any of the colors yet we only have black and white that's is that about right? All you need is. That's all. All you need is <clears throat> black and white. Now it knows. Haha, <laughs> right, sorry. So yeah. So yeah, so now you can see how that kind of makes it with the black next to the, the highlight on the lower edge. Um, helps that look like it's actually a dent with a scratch next to it. Um, just like this is actually a dent, you know, with a highlight on the lower edge. So yeah, now let me grab my highlight color. I wanna add more highlights. So yeah, this is, I mean, you muck around with this technique a bit and you, uh, you use a lot of different colors with it, which is why I think it's fun. Um, if you find that this is just too complicated, you can always cut a step out. Uh, but if you want really, really pretty metals, like now that side, I think that side's looking really nice at this point. I think I need to carry the highlights down a little bit. There we go. And then I want to actually pick this up just like the light was. So I'm using some of my highlight color to do that. And I'll probably grab some blade steel, just straight up, or uh, filigree silver straight up, and uh, use that also. Fun fact, by the way, for, yeah. uh, for any uh, movie people out there or people who have a, an interest in those uh, clacker boards who don't really know what they're used for. They're not just used for tr scene uh, markings for post. The color rainbow at the top is meant for white balancing in post. So you, in theory, can uh, put it in front of something that's trying to find true white, and it finds it. So that's uh, that's why the colors are at the top of those uh, clacker boards. Just fun fact, if you didn't know. Fun fact. Bringing in some shiny on that because this area projects out, so it might actually take some damage or rubbing that might uh, rub out this um, corrosion. Let me see here. I want to kind of dull that down a little, so I think I am going to throw a little bit of the remember the russet brown uh, glaze over the top of it. Whenever I need either either russet or um, or walnut work both they both work well. If you ever feel like your metallics are getting too harsh, um, just throw glaze over them. Super easy. Like that could be a little bit, take it down. And because you're just doing a glaze, which is a transparent application of paint, you, you don't lose your shininess. Like you still get shinies. Shinies. I think that's pretty actually. That's looking pretty good. I, I have a dent here that I didn't highlight as much. I do want to grab some uh, filigree silver and highlight that sucker. So we can even see it. See that dent in the armor? That's uh, darker because my glaze has picked that up, but I can emphasize it if I want by putting a little bit of a highlight. See? So now it really looks like a divot in the armor because I've added a little bit of metallic just stippled around the lower edge, and that picks up that dent in the armor. So essentially you can use this technique to identify and then emphasize all of your dents and scratches in your sculpt. So there we go. Let's tip him away from the light. And the real test is, is does he still read if we don't have a huge direct light source? Yeah, he still reads pretty well. Again, it's hard. It's hard when you... Uh... Oh, thank you very much for saying so, Jay. I do do some more, like, 
uh, complicated stuff, obviously, like today is a little bit. But even this, even this is, is pretty accessible to beginners. It's just really painting it bright colored and then using browns and blacks and sometimes even some reds if you want to do kind of blood splatters um, to just go and stipple, stipple them over the top of the armor. So it's not hard to get used to. Uh, it's a very easy technique to get used to. So I think it's very accessible for beginning painters. I think sometimes people dumb it down too much for beginning painters because, you know, it, it, this, this stuff isn't hard. Um, it's just a different way of thinking about stuff. So, As a side note, Dan, yeah. I, uh, I do do as well. You do do? Yeah, do do. You do do. There we go. All right. So, yeah. Shiny but dirty um, modeled looking breastplate. Steel. Ah, uh, awesome. Looks pretty good. Yay, I'm back. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy can be hard to NMM. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's, here's like kind of a, a tip, a pro tip here. Haha, <laughs> it is pro tips, right? Um, when you have big areas like this, big flattish areas, it's much easier to make metallics look better on these, and it's much harder to do good NMM. Um, on a big, big surface like this. So the bigger the flatter surfaces are, the more difficult it can be. It's when you have lots of little areas, like down here, this would be very easy to NMM. Like, well, okay, relatively easy. As easy as NMM ever gets. Um, but this is harder. So just, a, just that pro tip for you guys. So if you're trying NMM, I usually recommend people try it on smaller areas, like swords um, first. Uh, and then move into like big broad areas like breastplates and shields unless if you've got a breastplate that's cut up in like if this had a lot more plates on it um, Then you could absolutely do it It's just when you have a one big area that's all metal that doesn't have a lot to break it up that can be very difficult to do NMM on Yeah flat ones are more challenging Valandar um, Maybe we'll talk about that at some point if I can find a nice big flat thing uh, now you've opened up the poop jokes, Justin. Uh, that's literally my job. Is it on your job description? Yeah. Did you guys think I was here to make sure the equipment was selected carefully and, and operated correctly? Because that's, that's not um, why I'm here. So if we're doing the shoulder plates, then you're kind of thinking about, all right, so if I angle this, you can kind of see so that this is where the light would go, right? It'd be lighter toward the edge here, and it probably would have some light kind of skittering into here. But this, this crevice in general is more in shadow. So your dark, and this is also going to be right in here, is going to be where all the fluid and rain and water and goop accumulates, right? It's all going to go into this, this trough that will funnel it off. Uh, so all of your dirt and grime and blood is going to go into that trough. And your edges are going to be shinier probably because there's going to be people battering at the sky trying to take him down. So anything that sticks up or out is going to have more scratches and it's going to be brighter in general than stuff in the trough. So hopefully that helps, Jay. But yeah. Yeah, flat NMMs, flat surfaces with NMM can be very difficult. Um, you really have to, it helps to kind of study them. I go to the Renaissance fairs and take pictures. It's very useful that way. Rawr, he says, rawr. All right, I think we are at the stop point. Actually, we've gone a little long on this one here. I thought it was gonna be so easy. Who said metallics are easy? So there he is, one, one more uh, look for you guys. We had to uh, make up for the late start. Yeah, there we go. Oh, don't, yeah, don't get intimidated, Jay. Remember, okay, as, as ancient painter to beginning painter, Jay, you can always paint over it. This is why you keep your paint thinner, because you can always paint over it. You don't even really have to strip it. If you've used big globby paint or enamels or something on something, yeah, then you do need to strip it. But uh, otherwise, if you've just put a layer of paint on it and tried stuff like this, and you're like, oh, it looks awful, no, just try painting over it. As long as you can get a smooth base coat back on it, you can just paint it over. Never, never stress about it. Indeedy. You're welcome, Rings. But yeah, there are times when even I get intimidated by models where I'm just like, especially what really gets me is if it's a limited edition model and I only have one. If it's something that's in production, then I usually don't get nervous about it because I'm like, well, I can always get another one. Uh, it's only when things are like, you know, this is probably the only one of these I'm ever going to see, or if it's a really expensive model, then I get, I can get intimidated sometimes, but you, get, you just got to push past it. Like just start one area and just keep going. Well, thank you, Jay. 
Yeah, yeah, we're pure gold. Ha, 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 ha. Funny, funny, funny. Actually, it was pure silver <laughs> or steel. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Nomad Zeke. Yeah, but especially with bus. It's just like, it's so hard sometimes. They put them out in limited editions or you've got all those little tiny shops in Europe and then they just stop. Like, um, oh, what was the one that I liked that was, uh, dang, I was, it's, it's, miss, I'm missing it. <sighs> there was one that was, it did the mermaid. It was the, the one that did the mermaid that David had. And I cannot remember. Something art. But it, was, it did some beautiful pieces, and then they just stopped. We had to look everywhere to find a mermaid for David. All right. All right, Miss Ant, I have a raid ready to go. I think. Well, who are we raiding? Uh, we're going to be raiding Dysus. She actually might still be in the, the chat listening to what we're doing. While oh, streaming. okay. Maybe. I don't know. So, Dysus, if you're in the chat, get, get painting. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh... Thank you for, uh, for... Oh, thanks, Magnetic Gumby. All right. Yeah. So yeah, if that's if that's what you mean by the blued steel, I can take a look at it and we can see if we can figure out how to do it. Um, but thank you guys for showing up. And Indeedy. Keep being awesome. Indeedy. Spread the reaper oh, love. Oh, and I totally forgot to push my Patreon again. Hi guys, I have a Patreon. <laughs> for those of you who aren't, uh, uh, who haven't looked at it already, it is Patreon.com/slash/paintingbig. Uh, and I love it. And we do lots of PDFs and videos and we're doing a paint along even for the $15 tier. And it's uh, pretty fun. I actually like it. I did some sculpted, showed them how to sculpt a base the other day. So awesome. Have a great one. Thank you everybody that for coming and making our days better. Yes. Oh, and thank you rings for, uh, for commenting, on, commenting on my voice again. I and appreciate just, that. I, I still think he has to get voice lessons and get an even sexier voice rings. I'm okay with that. Let's, <laughs> we'll start a GoFundMe for it. WCC War, were you late coming in? Is that why you're crying? Or are you crying because we're going away? You shouldn't cry. We're going over to raid, raid cool yeah. people. Yeah. And actually, if you want to see Anne paint dragons, come back at 3 o'clock. Yes, come back at 3. I'll be painting dragons, struggling with this darn camera and its white balance as I try to paint a white dragon. Oh, That'll no. be fun. I'm going to replace it with one of our backups. All right, all right. He says he's going to back it up, so we hope. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Have, Have a, a good, good one. Time.